It's really been a, an enormous scandal uh, in, the pros in the prosecution uh, of these cases on the part of the post office. And I hope that these sorts of organizations will never again be allowed to conduct prosecutions on their own behalf. These sorts of cases should always be brought by an independent prosecutor. Let's now speak to Lord Ken MacDonald, who's the former Director of Public Prosecutions, because some of the conversation around this injustice is about what legal options could be pursued now. Good morning, Lord MacDonald. Good morning, Kate. We know there, Tom was just telling us, that the Minister Alex Chalk is going to meet with senior judges and to put some options to them. Do you have any idea what those options could look like? I think there are two broad options here. One is um, some sort of legislation, in other words, Parliament passing an amnesty bill, granting an amnesty uh, to um, all of the convicted postmasters, which would remove any penalties or any uh, stigma uh, from them uh, to the extent that it that it can. That, that would be a very unusual course. I mean, we have done it previously on rare occasions um it, it, it happened in, in in the case of some of the people convicted during the northern irish troubles of course the second option is for some form of mass appeal to be put before the court of appeal um bulk appeal uh un, unresisted by post office lawyers and accepted by the judges so that the convictions are over turned now my understanding is that most of the post office or many of the postmasters have indicated they would prefer the second, because they want to be exonerated by the system that convicted them uh, in, in the first place. And I can understand that. The problem is getting the Court of Appeal to agree in advance of hearing any cases that it will allow appeals, because normally the judges want to hear the evidence and consider the issues before they grant appeal. And the mere fact that uh, an appeal isn't resisted by the prosecution does not automatically mean, uh, normally, that the Court of Appeal will uh, overturn the conviction. So I imagine what Alex Chalk, the Justice Secretary, is going to be discussing with the senior judges is what would their approach be if there were to be a mass appeal? Would they insist on hearing evidence and uh, giving individual judgments or would the judges be happy with simply overturning the convictions on the basis of the post office lawyers not resisting uh, appeals? And that's going to be the knotty issue, which mm -hmm. I suspect Alex Chalk will be discussing with judges uh, today. And just for clarity, on that first option, you said it's an unusual move for Parliament to grant a pardon like this, although it has been done before. Why is it yeah. unusual? Well, because we we have a very strong sense of the rule of law uh, in our country, and these matters are thought to be matters for the courts. We generally resist the idea of politicians in Parliament determining whether people should be guilty or not guilty of offences in very exceptional circumstances it can happen but it's obviously better if at all possible for these issues to be resolved in the courts after all it's the courts that convicted these uh, uh innocent people many people would say it's for the courts to uh acknowledge that in fact those convictions are wrongful convictions and that these people should not have these convictions stand against them so i think in rule of law terms that's the preferable option if it can be done quickly and if there's cooperation um, from the judges, and those are the two big ifs that, that Alex Chalk will be discussing with, I would imagine, very senior judges, probably including the Lord Chief Justice herself. Yeah, which brings us to one of the biggest questions, I think, for many people who listen to these kinds of interviews about the post office scandal. Why do you think it is that the legal system didn't flag up an issue here? Is it is it the responsibility of the legal system to have sort of stepped back a bit or somebody in that system and said, well, hang on, there's a lot of these cases being brought before the courts. Is there something going on here that seems a bit off? Yeah, I think uh, this, is a, this is a system failure. I think one of the central problems has been, and this has been commented on, that one of the central problems has been that the, the prosecutions here were being conducted by the allegedly aggrieved party. In other words, the prosecutions were being conducted by the post office rather than by an independent prosecutor, the Crown Prosecution Service. And I'm quite sure that some of the disclosure scandals which have occurred during these cases, the post office's failure to disclose to defendants material which would have exonerated them, would not have, for example, all of the problems that the post office knew existed with the Horizon system, those disclosure scandals would almost certainly not have happened if an independent prosecutor, the Crown, Crown Prosecution Service, had been conducting this prosecution because the prosecutor is under an obligation to disclose to the defence material which either assists the defendant or under, undermines the prosecutor's case. And obviously this material should have been disclosed right at the start. And if it had been, these cases would have collapsed years and years ago. So it's really been a, an enormous scandal uh, in, the pros in the prosecution 
uh, of these cases on the part of the post office. And I hope that these sorts of organizations will never again be allowed to conduct prosecutions on their own behalves. These sorts of cases should always be brought by an independent prosecutor, uh, a prosecutor independent of the alleged aggrieved party, because that minimizes the risk of these sorts of miscarriages of justice. But it's been an, a, an absolutely appalling story. I mean, it's just clearly, as many people have said, the worst mass miscarriage of justice in modern British history. And, and nobody comes out of it particularly well, apart, apart from the courts, who, when they've been seized of these cases, have tended to come to the right conclusion, uh, mm. as we've seen in recent years. But given what you've said there, and I, I take it as a given that you don't think private companies ought to bring about their own prosecutions, would I be right in thinking that? Yeah, yeah. I don't think, I, I, I mean, there, there is a place for private prosecutions. Um, sometimes the state doesn't pick up cases that should be prosecuted and individuals bring cases that, for example, the CPS refuses to bring and sometimes those those individuals win their private prosecutions but i don't think big organizations with their own corporate culture and sense of loyalty and so on should be allowed to prosecute cases on their own behalf i think that's a recipe for disaster and the proof of the pudding is in the eating here because we've seen the disaster yeah do you think at the time the director of public prosecutions should have stepped in when this was going on and said well hang on a minute it's not right that the post office is prosecuting these people in the courts this is something that really does need to be taken over by the CPS. I don't I don't think that would be a fair criticism because the, these are these are matters for parliament not for the DPP. I mean for years and years and years government organizations like the DWP, the, the post office and other uh, government uh, departments have conducted their own prosecutions and we haven't seen problems to, uh, to this extent before. So I don't think that would be a, a fair uh, a fair comment. I think what should have happened is that ministers should have picked this up much more quickly. The ministers responsible for the post office who, who were aware that there were problems from, you know, 2010, 2011, 2012 onwards, they should have been much more proactive in, in interrogating the post office and in satisfying themselves that this wasn't going horribly wrong. I mean, some newspapers, Private Eye, for example, famously has been writing about this story for years and years and years and got it right, right from the start. Um, I think ministers uh, bear some burden of blame here. Yeah, and just finally, I mean, you talked about disclosure and the failure <coughs> to disclose a lot of information in these cases which would have helped those people who were dragged through the courts. There's also been pressure, it's been said, to plead guilty particularly put on some of those people who wouldn't have been able to navigate the court system like the post office could. Do you think there's a problem there with people encouraged to plead guilty to avoid a prison sentence? Should that the use of those kinds of deals be discouraged? This is an enormous scandal um, that people who were innocent uh, were pressurised to plead guilty to lesser offences in order to avoid going to prison. And, and again, I think that the way in which negotiations with, with the defence are conducted are much more likely to be done appropriately if you have an independent prosecutor like the CPS conducting these sorts of negotiations. If you have the so-called aggrieved party conducting these negotiations, then they're, they're much more likely to be done in an improper way. It's not improper per se for the prosecution and the defence to get together uh, to discuss uh, whether a, a plea might be available on a less account, and that happens every day in our courts, but we never want to get into the American system, which is that you charge people with more serious uh, offences in order to bully them uh, into pleading guilty to less offences on pain of serving very long sentences if they don't cooperate. That's the American system. We never want to see that in this country because it means innocent people being lent on, being bullied into pleading guilty. And, and that's just not something we want to be doing here. Lord Ken MacDonald, former Director of Public Prosecutions, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. And of course, that's who we spoke to yesterday. Exactly that happened to him. He said, I know I was innocent, but I was told the courts are going to believe the, the post office. You've got no evidence. Either accept you're guilty and don't go to prison or roll the dice and end up in prison. Yeah. And I think that disgusts quite rightly lots of people. And, and Ken McDonald there calling that an enormous scandal. It feels like the central uh, reform from this will be ending private prosecutions by companies because then at least you'll have the state involved. Now, the state is not perfect, as we know from all sorts of other scandals, but the state has systems in place to at least limit the power of abuse, you have yeah. to imagine. I'm interested, though, that, that Lord Macdonald there said when I asked him, should the DPP have stepped in? And of course, we're talking about Sir Keir Starmer. Um, uh, should, you know, should he have stepped in and, and been involved? He is a former director of public prosecutions, too. And, you know, Lord Macdonald saying, no, that that wouldn't 
be part of this conversation. It wouldn't be a fair criticism. It should have been ministers who, who should have been more live to yeah. this and should have been more careful about what was going on. 